Do barter farms seem complicated and tough to build? What if I told you I have a simple to build, but fast and effective farm design for you? Stay tuned. Hello everyone, PDF here, and today we will be making a very simple to build bartering farm that will get you lots of goodies fast. Let's get started. As always, there will be a list of materials down in the description. For this farm, we're going to need an area that is 5 wide by 3 deep by at least 4 tall, though having more room up top just makes a few things easier. As this farm is going to actually have two modules in it, so two little piggies, one here, one here. It's possible to build it with just the one. All you'd have to do is kind of leave these two bits off, but it would look kind of funny and be less efficient. So I'm going to build it in this video, okay? Okay, so first we'll start by putting our output chests in here and here. And so into our output chests, we'll feed a couple of hoppers with some carpet on top. Next, we'll take some of our solid blocks, place them here. So now we're going to break a few blocks. We're gonna be setting up the clock that powers this. So what we're gonna to wanna to do, block on top and we'll break that one underneath. Then we'll come over to this side. Uh, we're gonna need this spot here. I'm gonna put this block here so that way if for some reason say I was digging around, I would know that that is a block I don't wanna to touch. And from here, what we're gonna do, okay, we're gonna put a dot of redstone right here. And then we'll put a block on top. We won't need to get back under there again, so that's why we'll do that. Next, we are going to drop down so this is easier. Take a repeater, point it into this block. It needs to be pointing into here. Not like that. Want it pointing into this block right here. Then we're going to take our redstone torch and put it right here. And as you can see, blinky blinky, we have made a redstone clock. It's a very simple redstone clock. can be used in a lot of different farms and devices, none of which I am smart enough to talk about right here and now. Uh, I just kind of know how to do this for this. I'm still learning myself. And then one other thing we're going to grab uh, is a lever that will be our on and off for the farm so we'll go ahead and flip that there and then to see the clock here a little easier this is the shape we have underground we have our dot of redstone right there we have our repeater and the torch this is what the clock looks like so this gets used in a lot of different things so it's a good one to learn it's a very basic as you can see it's a constant signal so it comes in very handy so now the only other thing we're going to do in terms of the clock Let's put a dot of redstone right there, and you'll see why in a moment. Next, I'm going to grab a few things from my inventory. Okay, so now what we're going to do is a couple more blocks here and here. Now, we're going to come around like this. See the kind of uh, upside down L shape or Tetris piece, whatever you want to call it. Then, looking at the redstone dot, another block that will put it right on top. We'll take our droppers, put them here and here. Now I've tested this with both droppers and dispensers and they both seem to work. So if you happen to have, you know, one or the other lying around, either should be fine. We're not going to put any blocks here because what we need for that is some hoppers. We're going to put a hopper and a hopper. Now, there is an optional bit you can do if you want. And it, the farm will work totally fine if you do this. I've tested it. It works fine. If you want, you can have two hoppers instead of one. What we're going to do, these are where our chests for the gold are going to be going and the gold will feed into there. What that does is it takes two gold at a time out of the chest and puts it in the dropper. I go with one simply because honestly the farm is fast enough to keep up with it. It's not anything that I need to worry about in terms of it'll lag behind. Uh, so that's just fine. Either way, totally up to you. And then we'll put our chests here. Now you can have them facing either way. I just kind of like the way they look when they open up like that. Personal preference. Next, we are actually going to take our sticky piston, put it right there. That is a very important part of this farm. We'll get to that in a moment. Block, block, block. Uh, put a couple of little blocks just so we can step up here. Now, what we're going to do is glass, 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 no glass right here. What we're going to put here is very important for how this farm works the way it does. Now we need to put a gold block. I'm using an actual block of gold, but any of the gold style blocks, gold ore, deep slate, or nether gold ore, all of them will work, but it has to be gold somehow. And if you're able to get some, even gilded blackstone will work. As long as the block has 
or is gold, that's the very important thing. It's kind of the secret of how this farm works as efficiently as it does. Now the next important step is we're going to click that like button if you're enjoying today's video and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really helps out the channel and gets my content out to more of you wonderful people out there. Subscribe! Alright, self plugs aside, we are going to want to get our piggies in place, however you go about it. In survival you'll be naming them, I just happen to be naming mine Piggy. Put some glass on top, and that's it. Seriously, that's everything. All we need to do now, grab ourselves some gold. Yeah, I'll grab a stack, throw it in the chests, flip the switch. And as you can see, they're trading instantly because of this gold block moving. For reasons that I have absolutely no idea, nor could explain, I just know it works, but it makes them trade instantly. See, that was half a stack of gold each done just like that. And one thing to keep in mind, uh, they will drop the loot faster than the hoppers can keep up. Just give it a minute, it will all work its way through. As you can see, they're not the fastest. And a moment or two later, voila. Look at all our tasty, tasty nether drops. All the goodies we got. Now, one important thing about this, and a reason why it actually might be good to build this very early once you get into the nether, is actually these right here. You get both splash and regular potions of fire resistance. So it's an easy way to get those potions early on before you can find a nether fortress and get, you know, get yourself some of that wardage. Now an optional thing you can do, two optional things really that you can do, take your favorite light block, break these two, because they're actually not needed, and replace these with some light blocks. If you just want to brighten it up a bit, or say your build, you know, you need to have some light to prevent stuff from spawning, that is totally fine. The other thing I advise doing is leaving this spot empty, because as you saw, you know, the drops would be sitting there waiting. If you don't want to wait around for them, just walk up into the corner here, and bloop, you'll pick them all up, go right in your inventory, you know, just kind of another easy way to deal with the drops if you don't want to wait around for them to feed in. But they should all feed into the chests well before the five minute despawn time limit's up. And with that, we are out of time for today. Want to see some more content? Check out this video here. And thanks for stopping by. See ya.